Okay, so good afternoon to everybody. Welcome to this ninth seminar within the Jews Colloquia. Today we have the pleasure to have a speaker, Dr. Paolo Scaravaggio. Please, Paolo, could you please share the screen and show yourself, please? Dear yeah, Paolo, good afternoon. Let's see with the slide. That's perfect. Okay. So before starting with the seminar, I would like to spend a few words about Paolo. So Paolo received the bachelor degree in mechanical engineering, master's degree in management engineering, and PhD recently from the Politecnico of Bari. Uh, he's currently a researcher at the Decision and Control Laboratory of Politecnico of Bari. In uh, in 2019, he was a visiting student at the Delft Center for Systems and Control, UT Delft, and his research interests include modeling optimization, game theory, and control of complex multi-agent systems with application in energy distributed systems and social networks. So, Paolo is recipient of the 2022 IEEE Control Systems Society, Italy Best Young Author Journal Paper Award. And in fact, we are very happy because this is the first seminar within the Jews Colloquia that is also sponsored by this organization, again, the IEEE CSS Italy. So thanks again, Paolo, for being with us. You can start. Thanks, Professor, for um, your really nice introduction. And I really, I'm really honored to be here, actually. And uh, so I'm going to present a really short seminar about uh, seeking Nash equilibria um, under non complex coupling constraints. But first of all, I want to thank um, Raffaele Carli, Sergio Grammatico, and Maria Grazia Lottoli for uh, their really uh, deep contribution to, to this research work. I will start just uh, with a really short introduction on why game theory uh, is so important. And uh, I will use um, actually a quite strange example that came from the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, where, for instance, at uh, the European level, we had that, uh, uh, several uh, independent decision maker, um, for instance, uh, the European Commission, the government, the municipality, they had um, several different uh, reactions. To the, to the pandemic, but this, uh, this action, they were all uncoordinated. So actually the action of one, uh, one of these uh, uh, player, let's say, let's call them in this way, uh, impacted the, uh, impacted all the other, uh, all the other decision makers. So this is the perfect case on um, why game theory can be useful to model such a situation. But let's uh, go more, more on a formal, uh, on a formal way. So let's formalize what is actually a game. And uh, we can uh, uh, define it by a set of players. We actually play in, uh, in the game. Um, and we can define a set of, uh, of this player or this maker. And um, each of these player have a decision available um, that it can select from, uh, it's uh, actually it's called, um, uh, local feasible set, so he has his own constraints. And uh, let me also define two more vectors, uh, X, which is a, a vector which collects all the strategies of all the player, just stack, stack together all these strategies, and X minus I, that collects all the strategies of the player different from the player I, okay? Uh, so actually, what uh, what makes uh, um, a game different from a classical optimization problem is that in uh, the cost function that here we we call payoff function, that actually represent the objective of the uh, of the single player. We have not only uh, the decision variables of the uh, player i, but we have also all the decision variables of the other player. So actually, it's, uh, uh, it's actually welfare, it's outcome, is dependent also on the other player. We have several ways how to find a solution to, to a game. Uh, so actually find a, um, a solution for all the player. 
Uh, one of the most uh, famous is the so-called Nash equilibrium, but it's not, uh, of course, the only one. And uh, the solution of this player is basically um, an, an interconnection of uh, an in interdependent decision problem that uh, you can find here, where each player aims to minimize its, uh, its cost function. And uh, the nice things about uh, um, the Nash equilibrium that when we reach it, uh, no player wants to, to change is uh, strategies uh, because there are no other strategies that you can select um, that can increase its welfare if all the other player uh, don't change the, the strategy. Uh, but from a control pers uh, from a control theoretic per perspective, um, the objective is to find a, me a mechanism. So basically, an algorithm or uh, a discrete time uh, system. Uh, to update the strategies of the, this player. So actually we can also define, define it as a state of, of this player to an Nash equilibrium. A further um, improvement of this model is the so-called generalized Nash equilibrium, where we don't have only the uh, interconnection uh, between the cost function, but also uh, within a so-called uh, coupling, uh, uh, coupling feasible set. So actually, we have that uh, um, each player cannot select um, a strategy from only its feasible set, um, but um, the coupling feasible set is actually the interconnection of um, of uh, this um, of the single player uh, feasible set. That is a is a is a really high uh, harder. Uh, it's a really hard, harder problem with respect to the Nash equilibrium problem. And in fact, um, the question that uh, uh, most of that can, can arise from, uh, uh, from defining a generalized Nash equilibrium is to, um, to find it uh, and also to prove its existence. Um, when we talk about generalized Nash equilibrium, uh, we need some technical assumptions in order to uh, ensure the existence of this equilibrium. And uh, these are, for instance, the continuity or the compactness of uh, the sets that are involved in the game. But uh, these two uh, assumptions can be actually relaxed with, uh, with other assumptions. Uh, but one of the most important uh, uh, assumptions that we need and we, can, we cannot actually uh, relax is the convexity. And uh, actually, uh, this seminar is uh, uh, focused on relaxing this further assumption. Okay, uh, this is really important for um, for ensuring the existence or even the convergence or of uh, solution algorithm, because most of the time uh, the proof uh, are based the proof that. Uh, uh, demonstrate the existence of an equilibrium are based on the fixed point theorems that actually require the convexity. Um, in fact, in, um, in the related literature, uh, one, one class of uh, um, Nash equilibrium, of generalized Nash equilibrium problem, uh, is, is really common. And this is so called jointly convex Nash equilibrium problem, where we have a convexity assumption. And in this case, we can ensure the, the existence uh, and the convergence to, to this equilibrium. I will take now uh, a small break on, uh, on game theory to talk about uh, variation in the, the variation inequality problem. Uh, why I need to talk about this? Uh, because some class of uh, uh, games are solved through this other problem. And um, then I, we will see why. Uh, but let me introduce this problem. Uh, so basically, we introduce the variation inequality problem, and um, to define this problem, we need uh, a set. So uh, a set that is uh, actually um, the set where we can select uh, the variable x, and uh, a map that we call it f here. So the variation inequality problem is the problem of finding a vector uh, in this set that respect this relation, okay? Um, the variation inequality problem is defined only on a uh, closed uh, and convex uh, set and on continuous mapping. Uh, to uh, improve this, uh, uh, this problem, we can define the quasi-variation inequality, 
where actually uh, we make the, not only the, the map, but also the, the, the set dependent on uh, the vectory X. And in fact, the, the set it becomes a point to set mapping. We need the, uh, the variation inequality problem because uh, we can actually solve some class of uh, generalized Nash equilibrium by solving uh, uh, the associated quasi variation inequality problem. And in fact, um, we have, um, um, let me introduce two more assumptions that is the, uh, the monotone and the strongly monotone assumptions um, on, the, on the map F. And um, uh, these are properties of, uh, of the mapping. And actually we have that when um, uh, the mapping F is, uh, is monotone, the solution set of the variation inequality is closed and convex. If we uh, strengthen the assumption on uh, monotonicity, so we make it strongly monotone, and you, here you can see what means to be uh, for a map to be strongly monotone, we have that the solution of the variation inequality admits a uh, single solution. So let's see how we can actually solve a game through a variation inequality problem. Well, basically, uh, we define the mapping F by stacking together all the um, subdifferential or the subgradients uh, of the different player. So we just take the, uh, if uh, the, the cost function f is differentiable, we just uh, stack together um, all, uh, all, all the differential, okay? And uh, we actually uh, define the, uh, the set in the variation inequality as the intersection of the local uh, visible set of the, of the different player. So in this case, if we define the variation inequality this way, we have that the solution of the variation inequality are exactly the same solution of the uh, Nash equilibrium problem. Okay, so solving the Nash equilibrium problem is equivalent of solving the variation inequality defined in this way. Uh, similarly, we have that uh, uh, if we define, we, uh, we define, sorry, uh, a quasi, uh, quasi variation inequality problem by changing the feasible set with the coupling feasible set, because in the generalized Nash equilibrium, we have uh, that the coupling feasible set is, is, uh, is coupled within uh, the different player. We have a same uh, similar um, relation, so that we have that all the solution of the generalized Nash equilibrium are solution of the quasi variation inequality problem. In case of jointly convex uh, generalized Nash equilibrium problem, we can actually use the variation inequality. So this is, uh, uh, is easier actually to solve, but we have a, uh, a drawbacks because then we have that uh, all the solution of the variation inequality are solution of the generalized Nash equilibrium problem, but the opposite is not true. Why is not true? Uh, let's uh, characterize the solution and let's see why. Uh, if we take, for instance, um, the optimality condition of the of one single player, and then we uh, take also the same condition uh, for the corresponding uh, variation inequality problem. Here I'm assuming all the, all the assumptions in order to use the KKT condition. Um, so I don't know if you are aware, but I just want to, uh, to point out that, uh, that by showing the two, um, the two optimal condition, the case of the game and the case of the variation inequality problem, uh, we can see some uh, relation. And actually we have that all the problem, all the solutions uh, that we find with variation inequality problem, so all the solutions that we find with this problem, are the one that actually keep all the Lagrangian multiplier for the uh, coupling constraints. So the nice things of keeping the Lagrangian multiplier equal for all the, uh, the different player is that the, uh, the equilibrium 
is actually uh, unfair because I'm actually um, sharing fairly uh, the coupling constraint to all the players. So we can actually uh, also define a kind of convexity for the, the mapping F before I call monotonicity. And we have that if we define the uh, cross function of the different player as convex, we have that uh, the, the mapping F is monotone. And we can actually, if I go back, we can actually say that if the uh, mapping F is monotone, the solution set is closed and convex. So actually the uh, solution set of the generalized Nash equilibrium with equal um, uh, with equal uh, Lagrangian multiplier is closed and, uh, and convex. If for instance F is strongly, is strongly convex, then F is also strongly monotone. And in this case, uh, an equilibrium, so an Nash equilibrium exists. And is unique for the the, the characteristic that the, uh, I just shown before. So this is actually uh, what we have uh, in the in the literature. So uh, we have that we can use uh, the variation inequality to solve some generalized Nash equilibrium problems. And uh, in this case, uh, we needed the uh, convex assumption. And in particular, uh, the convex assumption on the coupling feasible set. But this uh, is not the case in several uh, different applications. For instance, uh, here there are some cases uh, uh, arising from uh, uh, power system engineering, where we have, for instance, to solve the so-called optimal power flow uh, problem, where the, um, the power flow equations in a, in a power grid, sorry, in a power grid are highly non-convex. And in this case, if we imagine a group of players uh, who participate in an energy market, then they have to share these uh, um, this, uh, uh, this constraints, uh, which are non-convex. If I move then to, uh, to another uh, example, uh, we have that uh, uh, we can also define some, uh, some games um, in a uh, in, in radio system uh, where we have uh, some power allocation problem. And also in this case, we have some constraints in the, in the frequency uh, in, uh, in communication channels. And most of the time, uh, in some problem, the, this couple constraint are also non-convex. Then I move to another example, uh, which is actually quite new. Uh, this is so-called um, is really so-called Eigen game, which is basically a solution of the principal component analysis uh, as an Nash equilibrium. So actually, take a problem that is uh, really um, computationally expensive. So to I cannot hear Paolo of the of the problem. And in this case, Paolo, can you repeat, please, because it was not possible to hear you in the last uh, seconds of this slide. Yeah. Okay. No. I, uh, okay. Um, in this example, um, is uh, uh, is in, uh, we can actually uh, solve the principal component analysis. Uh, that is basically the, the problem of finding the eigenvector of. Um, a really big uh, uh, data set. It can be also small, but it's really used uh, when the, the data set is really big. And uh, um, we actually give uh, to each player uh, the goal of finding one eigenvector of, uh, of the original problem. And um, we can actually uh, parallelize this problem and make it easier to, to actually solve. And in this case, we have that uh, uh, there should be a coupling constraint between all these, uh, actually between all the eigenvectors that the solution must, uh, must select. And this, uh, uh, this constraint is highly non-convex. Okay, so let's go ahead 
and uh, let's try to actually relax this uh, uh, assumption on uh, on the convexity of the, the set and uh, so let me just uh, introduce a couple of uh, assumptions that are the first one uh, is a, a really standard assumption on, on game theory so we assume that the, uh, the cost function are convex and continuously differentiable and actually uh, i'm assuming also the standard assumption on the coupling principle set the only things that i uh, just relax here is that the set can be um, non convex. So, as I said before, it's quite hard to find a classical Nash equilibrium uh, uh, in case of a non convex set. Actually, it's almost impossible to prove it. So, we actually search for um, weaker equilibrium conditions. Uh, and we actually came up with a new concept that we call uh, Clark's local generalized equilibrium. Uh, why we call it Clark? Because we actually um, use the, uh, the Clark theory on the tangent cone uh, to define this equilibrium. So we actually uh, we take the classical generalized Nash equilibrium and we change the uh, coupling feasible set that can be non convex with um, the, the Clark's tangent cone in that specific point okay so uh, the nice things about this problem is that when the set is convex uh, this problem is equivalent to the generalized Nash equilibrium and another uh, nice thing is that this um, uh, this new uh, set time varying no, sorry not time varying is a uh, is actually um, a mapping to point set is also uh, is an approximation of the original set. This set uh, is always convex for how we define it, since the Clark tangent cone is always convex. And uh, uh, for this characteristic, uh, it's uh, it's really important uh, because we uh, we actually can prove several uh, properties thanks to the convexity of the tangent cone. For the one uh, uh, who never uh, heard about uh, Clark's tangent cone, these are basically the collection of all the Clark's tangent vectors of a, a generic set to a specific point uh, of the set. For instance, uh, in this case, we have this point X, and in this case, the tangent, uh, uh, the Clark's tangent cone is this one. In case the uh, set is convex, the Clark's tangent cone uh, is equivalent to the uh, to the set. So um, after defining this new uh, condition, uh, we can actually uh, write the optimality condition, the classical optimality condition of the of this uh, this new equilibrium um, using the um, Using, for instance, the, the standard optimality condition or also the KKT condition. And uh, uh, we have that actually uh, this, uh, this point um, satisfies the KKT condition. So it is an, an, uh, uh, an optimal point from an optimization point of view. And um, furthermore, we can actually uh, modify. A standard quasi variation inequality problem that I uh, showed before uh, that can be used to solve the generalized Nash equilibrium problem to solve the Clark's local generalized Nash equilibrium problem. So, what I'm doing, I'm just taking a quasi variation inequality and I'm changing the original coupling set with um, uh, the, the, the tangent cone, the Clark's tangent cone. And we define a new subset of, uh, uh, of equilibrium points that we call it variational because it uh, satisfies, let's say, some uh, um, nice characteristic uh, as the, the case of, uh, as the convex case. In fact, similar to the relation between net and variational inequality problem, not all the solution of the Clark's local generalized Nash equilibrium are solution of the quasi variational equality problem, but we have the opposite uh, relation. So here I just um, uh, in included a recap uh, on the 
contradiction that we actually saw on the previous slide. And I recall that by solving the generalized equilibrium problem, is equivalent on solving the quasi variation inequality problem, um, where we have the, uh, the coupling principle set here. If we want to um, make, make it simple, we actually can use the variation inequality problem, but we need to uh, assume that uh, uh, the feasible set are convex. In our case, where the feasible set are non convex, we need to use the quasi variation inequality, but we still keep the same uh, uh, relation so that all the solution of this quasi variation inequality are solution of the uh, Clark's local generalized equilibrium problem. This uh, uh, can be proven because this, uh, as I said before, uh, this new um, uh, this new set, so the, the tangent code in a specific point is convex. And so we can actually prove that uh, only the variational solutions are passed from, uh, from this problem to the other problem. And uh, as for the case of uh, uh, jointly convex uh, games, we have that uh, one variational solution of the Clark's uh, local generalized equilibrium problem uh, is a locally fair equilibrium point because uh, in um, in the, in, the, in the tangent cone, actually, uh, there are not other um, there are not other uh, equilibrium that have the same Lagrangian multiplier as the case uh, in the, the convex case. So let me show a couple of examples uh, just to to show uh, show better the, this new concept, uh, and let's start with a really easy example where we have uh, two uh, different players. Uh, they have a, a really uh, standard and uh, easy uh, cross-function uh, cross or payoff function that is, uh, uh, is actually stri strictly convex. And we have a coupling uh, feasible set. Okay, So actually we have that uh, um, only the area outside of the, uh, the, this unitary circle is uh, a feasible point uh, for uh, for this game. If we uh, solve and characterize this uh, uh, game uh, through the KKT condition, we have that actually uh, the Lagrangian multiplier are one. So this is a really particular case where all the points of the circle are uh, variational uh, problem of the Clark's general, generalized niche equilibrium. But the really nice thing is that each of these points, we can say that uh, is uh, unique in its, uh, in its tangent cone. By just changing a little bit this example, so just moving a little bit the, the circle, uh, we have that optimality condition the change. And in this case, we have only two different uh, equilibrium points. So two different uh, variational solutions that are the one indicated in, uh, in the slide. The nice things about, uh, about this concept is that actually we have uh, different uh, uh, multipliers for this point. So we can uh, actually uh, see a difference between all the different um, equilibrium that uh, we found. But also in this case, uh, they are unique in their tangent form. So after defining the, uh, the existence of uh, this, uh, sorry, after defining the, this new problem, uh, let's see if we can actually prove the existence uh, and the uniqueness of, the, of this point. But uh, before doing so, I need to uh, introduce some operators. The first one, I will introduce the projection operator, well, known projection operator, and the distance operator between a point and a set. And then I will uh, recall um, what is actually a Lipschitz continuous function. Uh, it's a function that has uh, to respect this, uh, this relation. And we say that uh, actually um, a function that is Lipschitz continuous uh, is Lipschitz continuous with uh, a specific, uh, specific cont uh, constant L in this case uh, that is actually greater than, uh, than zero. 
um, when actually this uh, um, constant is equal to one, we say that uh, f is non-expansive. When is uh, uh, is less than one, we say that is a contraction, um, and we call it a, a contraction factor. Um, the next thing so working on the convex set is that the projection operator is a contraction uh, when we uh, we define the projection on the convex set, and uh, by having uh, that so that uh, the projection is a contraction, we can actually uh, show a lot of different uh, 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 nice characteristics. But one of the most important is that we can prove the existence and the convergence um, of, uh, uh, for instance, mm, projected gradient uh, demonstration approach, as you can find here. So we actually need only to find the fixed uh, fixed points of the projection of, uh, operator. Um, or the project, projected uh, gradient operator, and we find uh, the solution of the problem. But as I said before, um, we are uh, working on non convex set, and in this case, the, uh, the projection operator is a non expansive operator. What does it mean? It means that uh, um, the L, so the constant, is greater than one. So um, all the proof. The classical proof of existence uh, are not uh, uh, cannot cannot be used. So um, the question is now: Can we ensure that uh, the projection operator uh, is a contraction also when the set is non-convex? Um, or the other question is: Can we also use um, the projection operator by assuming that is an expansive operator, but with a certain degree. So can we still prove the existence of an equilibrium when this L is greater than one, but uh, is, uh, is, in, is bounded in, uh, in some way? Uh, well, actually, uh, yes, we can do it, but we need to include um, a technical assumption uh, that is the proximal uh, Proximal, the proximal smoothness properties on the set. And um, here I want to show uh, these, uh, these properties on, the, uh, on this example. Um, and basically, um, you can see here the original set in black. And you see here uh, another set that contains the original set that is, is called uh, an, an air air enlargement of the original set. So actually we take uh, one coefficient air uh, greater than, uh, than zero and we create another, uh, another set that contains the original one. When we have that distance function between a specific point in this enlargement and the, or, uh, the original set is uh, differentiable, then we have that uh, uh, is continuously differentiable. We have that the set is proximally smooth. The nice things of having these properties um, is that actually uh, the projection is a single tone, that the projection always exists for any point uh, contained in this uh, enlargement. Uh, and we have also that um, the projection uh, becomes a P Lipschitz continuous with an error greater than one, but bounded by a, a specific constant. And um, by recalling all these uh, uh, properties, we have that the projection operator from a point in this enlargement to the original set is well-defined and norm to normal continuous. Informally speaking, we have that the local non-convexities of a set are counterbalanced with the smoothness of constraints. So we enforce the smoothness of constraints uh, to counterbalance the, uh, the non-convexity of the set. For instance, here um, I'm going to show you some example of uh, uh, proximally smooth and non-proximally smooth set. In this case, uh, I have um, one, uh, one actually uh, one circle, okay. 
and is a, of course is a complex set. And in this case, this set we can say that it's approximately smooth with constant, uh, actually uh, with infinite, infinite, infinite constant. So the R is equal, sorry, the R characteristic R is actually um, for the convex set is infinite. Uh, here you see another example that is the one that I used uh, in the, the previous two um, examples of the, this new equilibrium concept is when we have actually uh, uh, the, the, one, the area outside uh, one, one ball and then we have that this, this is approximate smooth. So we have the radius of this ball is actually the constant, the proximality constant. Uh, but we have uh, um, that this property is actually um, is not uh, preserved when we also uh, include two different uh, sets. For instance, uh, in this case, I am merging two different convex sets uh, that are actually two square. I put them together, and actually the uh, the set that, that I obtained. Uh, merging these two uh, actually convex set becomes non-proximal smooth uh, since I have, uh, let's say, an angle, an angle here. Uh, but actually uh, also, for instance, uh, merging two different uh, uh, convex set uh, that I see, I, I say here, that are um, proximal smooth, um, in this case, they are not, uh, they are not proximal smooth. But there are, there are actually some conditions, so sufficient conditions to guarantee the proxy regularity uh, of this set. So actually we can merge two different uh, uh, sets, convex or non-convex or proximally smooth and convex, uh, and uh, ensure that uh, the union is uh, actually uh, prox uh, proximally smooth. Um, we, uh, we need only to ensure that uh, uh, actually all the constraints that define the set are differentiable and Lipschitz continuous on the uh, air, air enlargement of the set. And actually we need uh, um, only to, uh, uh, to show that this uh, condition is respected. Uh, this condition, uh, in, uh, in case of uh, a single uh, equality constraints, equality or inequality constraint, uh, actually can be also uh, not considered. So when we have a single uh, uh, coupling constraints, we need only the, uh, the differentiability of the constraint. So this, this makes uh, uh, this, uh, this approach um, really useful as we need only uh, to show that uh, the, the coupling feasible set is made out of one single, uh, one single equality or inequality, and that uh, this uh, equality or inequality is differentiable. So having said that we need to uh, include these uh, assumptions when actually uh, we want to prove the existence of this equilibrium, uh, we can actually show that uh, uh, with uh, the standard assumption that we used and considering that the set is non-convex, we can obtain actually a, uh, sorry, I don't know why it's going. We can actually uh, show this uh, uh, this proposition uh, where we show that uh, uh, that uh, when we the set is proximally smooth, uh, then we have at least one variational clubs local. Uh, generalized motion equilibrium. And uh, um, also regarding, for instance, uh, uniquenesses, we have that uh, uh, we can ensure the global, uh, since we are talking about the non-convex set, but we can show the local uh, uniqueness, but that uh, this local is uh, uh, restricted in the Clark's tangent cone. So uh, let's move now once we uh, define this new equilibrium uh, concept, we show that uh, it exists under this new assumption, and that uh, is actually unique. Uh, let's show how we can um, 
define uh, some uh, algorithm to reach this equilibrium. And uh, we actually uh, show the convergence on uh, two different uh, assumptions. The first one is uh, an assumption uh, that uh, the, um, the pseudo-gradient mapping, so the, actually the, the F, so the collection of all the cost function of, of all the uh, gradient of the cost function are strongly monotone. And here I recall what is actually uh, strong monotonicity. And in this case, we can use the classical projected approach. Of course, uh, the, um, uh, the step that we, uh, we must use uh, the classical projected approach is uh, actually uh, smaller than the classical, uh, the classical uh, step. Uh, but still, uh, if the set is proximally smooth, we have that uh, an equilibrium exists and we can converge to this equilibrium with this, uh, uh, this, uh, this algorithm. How we prove that uh, this uh, algorithm can converge uh, in this case, it was quite easy since uh, we needed to only to include uh, the assumption on the uh, proximality of the, on the set. Uh, and um, we actually uh, needed only to include this term P, that is the uh, Lipschitz constant of the projection on the uh, on the actually the projection of the this convex set, and uh, um, in this case, the key idea of this approach uh, is the counterbalance the uh, expansiveness of the projection operator because this is actually a constant greater than one. Actually, the projection is a, an expansive operator in this case since we are talking about a uh, non convex set. Um, the key point is to uh, counterbalance this, uh, uh, this expansiveness uh, property of the projection with the strong monotonicity of the pseudo gradient mapping. So we use the strong monotonicity of F in order to counterbalance the, uh, this uh, actually expansiveness of the projection. Let's move on and let's see uh, if we can still prove uh, the convergence. Uh, in case of only monotone uh, pseudo grand mappings. In this case, uh, this is actually a weaker uh, properties respect to the strongly uh, monotonicity. Uh, and here I call also what actually it means uh, for a function, for a mapping F to be uh, uh, monotone. And in this case, uh, we had to uh, actually modify uh, a well-known approach, uh, well approach, approach uh, in the literature. Um, and we actually, we had to, uh, to also prove again um, how uh, this approach can, um, uh, can converge to equilibrium. And also in this case, we find a step, a, a gradient step for this algorithm that is lower than the classical approach. Because of course we are, um, considering non-convex uh, sets. Uh, the, the demonstration of this approach is, uh, is really long, so I will, not, I will not show it, but I just want to um, show how this, uh, this, approach, uh, this approach works. So we start with uh, um, a generic point, X, that is contained, uh, that can be, can be also not contained in the original feasible set. And then we actually compute a new point um, that is basically uh, we move uh, in the direction of the, of the gradient of F and we obtain a new point. Sorry, is this. We move here, we obtain a new point based on the gradient of F. Then we project this point to the original feasible set and actually, we take this point and we use it in the second uh, step of the algorithm where we start again from the original point. But we use not the gradient 
that uh, uh, we use on the first step. So the gradient computed in this point, but we use the gradient computed uh, in, uh, uh, in the new point that we compute, is included in set. As you can see here, the second uh, uh, iteration then, once we define this new point, is projected not on the original set, but on the uh, tangent cone computed at the point uh, computed in the first step. Probably is a bit confusing, but the, um, the only things that I want to point out that is important is that we can do all these things. We can prove that this approach converges uh, because we ensure actually that at each iteration, uh, the y that we compute is included in the original visible set. The x, so the first, uh, first, um, first um, point that we uh, we use is contained in the not on the air enlargement, but on an air um, an half air enlargement of the set. So we have a set that is a little bit greater than the original set, but we ensure that uh, the iteration are all contained in this new set. And we ensure that also um, when we move from this original set away to find a new point, we ensure that uh, um, there are contained all on the air enlargement. Why we need to, to do so? Because if we go outside of this, uh, uh, this area, we have that the projection is not uh, well defined and uh, all the nice uh, properties of the, uh, of the projection operator uh, cannot be used. So we actually, uh, also in this case, uh, we use the, uh, the assumption of uh, on, the, on the, the mapping F, the monotonicity assumption, to counterbalance the expansiveness of the projection operator. But in this case, we have to be careful uh, um, that each iteration is contained in, uh, in this enlargement of the original set. But this is not hard to, uh, to have since um, if the, uh, we select the original uh, starting point inside of the original set, then uh, in employing this, sorry, this step, this gradient step, then you know, we can ensure uh, the, the convergence of this approach to, uh, to an equilibrium. To show also some example of, uh, practical example of this approach, I'm recalling the first two um, examples that I showed uh, before. So the one where we have a constraint a circle constraint, standard circle constraint. Not in this case, we have the Let's wait for Paolo to come back right. to us. So Paolo, please, can you repeat? Uh, sorry, sometimes we cannot hear you. Yes, I think that I have some problem with the with the microphone. I will, I will repeat. Uh, no, I just um, I was just uh, um, recalling uh, the first example that I showed before. So where we have um, the feasible set as the area outside of this circle, and we have two different uh, uh, players that aim to minimize their their goal. In this case, as I showed before, all the points of this circle are actually variational, uh, uh, variational point. This uh, is actually a really strange, um, a really strange uh, uh, case, um, since it's a really, really symmetrical, so actually it's not like that. Most of the time the equilibrium are two or three, uh, depends of, of course on the application. And here you can see that uh, the convergence of, uh, of the first, uh, of the first algorithm and of the second algorithm. If you see, if you see the second example, so the one where we have only two equilibrium points, 
In this case, it's interesting because um, we reach a different equilibrium depending on the uh, initial condition. So and you can see uh, really nicely here in this uh, face plane plot where if we select a specific, uh, specific initial condition for the strategy of the two player, we uh, will reach a different, uh, uh, a different point. And also in this case, I show you the, uh, the convergence of the, of the two, different, uh, uh, two different algorithms uh, on this, uh, this example. So as a conclusion, um, I show you a, a, new, uh, a new approach to uh, um, handle non-capex constraints. And um, I show you that uh, actually we can show that uh, uh, this approach can respect some optimal condition. And also that uh, um, we can prove actually the existence of this uh, new, new kind of equilibrium. Also their uniqueness, local actually, uniqueness. And also uh, we show that we can converge to this uh, equilibrium uh, by assuming that the pseudo gradient mapping F is strongly monotone or uh, only monotone. Uh, we are actually still working on um, uh, on this um, this uh, research work uh, since we are actually proving the, uh, uh, the existence on more general settings. Uh, but in particular, um, the convergence of distributed algorithm. Uh, in particular, we are almost uh, close to uh, show that. Uh, we can actually uh, reach this equilibrium also employ employing a distributed algorithm. Um, but in this case, we need to, uh, if you are curious, I can uh, show you some more uh, detail. We need only to assume that the coupling uh, set is uh, made of um, uh, some functions that are actually uh, separable. So we have to assume that uh, the, um, the coupling uh, constraints are separable within all the, the different players. So we need a further assumption to uh, ensure the, uh, the convergence in a distributed setting and um, so on. If you are curious about this topic, you can find uh, these two uh, reference and you can also find it uh, uh, is actually preprint online that is uh, is available and uh, i really thank you for uh, your attention if you have any questions thank you thank you paulo for this very interesting <clears throat> interesting talk um, are there some questions in the audience curiosities or so yeah Elena, please. Uh, thank you, Paolo, for your talk. It's, it's very interesting. I had a question about uh, decentralized convergence of decentralized strategies, but you answered, already answered to this point. And uh, I, I suppose that uh, assumptions on the sets are very important because uh, mm -hmm. uh, you have to choose uh, uh, independently the, the value of, uh, of the strategy. Therefore, I think uh, mm -hmm. that uh, the assumptions are really very important. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Are there some more questions? Could you answer this? Uh, so, Paolo, I, I mean, this is just a curiosity of mine. If you go, for example, to slide 74, this is just one. I mean, this is a very general, very general question because honestly, I'm not expert in this research. So you are going, in, uh, you are here, for example, giving a, a sequence, no? And mm -hmm. then you are going to study convergence and etc. My very basic question is, how do you compute this kind of stuff? Okay, I mean, I mm -hmm. guess you are not doing this by hand, right? Is, uh, is, uh, is this um, a slide that you're talking about, right? So how yeah, I mean, in general, you are talking about convergence of algorithms no, to compute uh, equilibrium, etc. So my basic question is, so uh, are there some tools that you can use to, to help you in doing this kind of computation? So, no. Well, no, this is actually um, depending on the on how is the 
how far is the, the, the problem. But in case uh, here I'm assuming uh, that, the, for instance, the cost function are differentiable, so um, this uh, algorithm is really easy to implement. So, um, okay. so basically, you need only to compute the, uh, the gradient of the, the different cost function of the player, and um, then you move toward the, gra the gradient. So as the classical optimization theory, and uh, you can actually do it uh, also in a semi decentralized way. So you can make, um, you can ensure that each player is moving uh, alone toward um, a new point. And then you, you may only uh, do the projection uh, in automatically way. I don't know if it's this the, the question or is a more technical question. No, no, I mean, I was uh, just wondering if there are some automatic that can help you in doing this kind of computation? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, no. Uh, for classical game theory, there are there are something, but uh, not for this, because it's, okay. uh, it's really strange. It's, uh, uh, to consider non-convex uh, games, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's really strange because it's really hard to actually uh, find an equilibrium to, because all the mathematical theory that there is behind uh, required convexity. Also, yeah, yeah, I can understand. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, non convexity is a hard problem, not only in Nash equilibrium, but uh, I mean, all the simple problem of computing invariant states becomes very hard, no? Yes. With non convex exactly. constraints. So it is, I mean, it is. And uh, on the other hand, as you were showing, no, it is uh, important to study this kind of problems because it arises in many practical, no? Mm -hmm. Many practical situations, applications of interest. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I was, I would have asked you to tell me which kind of application you can apply your kind of result, but I guess, I mean, this is a very hard, I mean, this is a theoretical result, and mm -hmm. I guess perhaps there is some time before you are able to apply in practice to concrete the case studies, this kind of theory, right? Mm -hmm. Well, um, we applied actually to, um, you can find this, uh, some uh, result on yeah, this paper. Yeah, yeah. Energy systems. Where we actually, uh, we applied to, uh, to a power system case. Okay. Uh, it's actually only on a simulation case, but it can be useful to consider, um, let's say, um, a market, uh, uh, Find a market equilibria, uh, considering also, also uh, power flow um, constraints. So we actually include it. It's not hard to do it um, if you talk with some uh, researcher on power um, power system engineering. They are used to work with the optimal power flow problem that is non-convex. So they are used to work with non-convex problem. So they have like some trick to ensure that. Uh, um, they select the um, a good starting point. They call it the flat start point, so that if they select this point, they have the convergence to an equilibrium that they they like. And so also um, we show that uh, if you define the problem uh, in a nice way, and uh, you start the strategies of all the player um, with uh, uh, with a specific uh, uh, initial strategies. It will converge always to a specific point, and this is something that is actually done in, uh, in power system engineering to uh, to consider actually the full non-convex uh, uh, cases because um, especially like for large scale uh, distribution system, you need to consider the full non-convex uh, uh, equation instead of using the classical uh, convex 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 um, convexified uh, models. Because they are, they can be um, quite uh, uh, quite high, let's say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is interesting, in fact, that you are already able not to apply your very beautiful, I would say, theory to concrete applications. This is uh, remarkable from my point of view. Congratulations. Are there some more comments from the audience? 
My last question, I mean, so this is uh, this question because I'm a little bit biased because I'm working on, uh, I don't know if you've heard about this stuff about this bit of stuff, you know, for verification and control and et cetera, where basically you start from a nonlinear system and you discretize it to do some stuff in terms of verification and control. So my, so my question is, if, I mean, if you have to handle uh, a problem, a non-complex problem that is very hard. Why not to discretize this problem and mm -hmm. work with the finite models? I mean, I, I'm not aware of the literature because I, I, I already told you that I don't know too much about game theory. I was wondering if there are some approaches in that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, there are actually some approaches to um, uh, discretize, to complexify the, uh, the problem, but uh, I like to show this example that I put, even if it's not uh, um, so so common to solve this. Uh, this actually is a new approach that is, um, uh, has been used by by Google, by Google researcher. And in this case, for instance, you have the perfect example on that. Um, if you define the game this way, you cannot convexify it or you cannot discretize it. Uh, you have it in this way, non-convex. And uh, this is also a problem that is um, uh, in similar way uh, is uh, is also research a lot in machine learning theory, where they have a lot of uh, non-complex functions, and uh, they are also starting to um, to studying some um, uh, non uh, uh, some game theoretical approach to solve these problems. So they use game theoretical approach to solve machine learning uh, uh, machine learning problems, and in this case, uh, uh, it's actually almost impossible to uh, to complexify the uh, or to uh, discretize the, uh, the equation. I mean, in the case of power system, or in this case, you you can do it. For instance, during the in case of power system, uh, they usually uh, or discretize the problem or uh, they make a um, a, a complexification for each step, let's say, and but in this case, for instance, you, you, you really cannot. It's really possible. So and uh, that's why they are really starting now to, to work on uh, on this field. Okay, okay. So, so this gives much more motivation to the research direction you are uh, studying. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay. So if there are more, if there are no more. Questions or comments? I would like to thank again Paolo for being with us today. Thank you. And say to you all, good afternoon then. Okay. So, thanks again. Goodbye. Good afternoon. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Very good, afternoon. good afternoon. Bye bye. 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 Well, I would like also to ask you to. Okay. Where you pick?